in this video i'll show you the very foundation principle of cutting out an image and removing the background Now there are many different ways and methods for removing a background from an image. You can use the background eraser tool, the magic wand tool, select and mask. And in the newer versions of Photoshop, there's even a remove background feature. But all of these tools and features work best if you're working and cutting out from a super high resolution image, if there's a clear distinction between your subject and the background or if the edges around your subject are clearly defined but what if you're not working with a high resolution image what if for example you're designing a flyer and someone sent you an image to go on that flyer and you have to cut that person out of that image to put on your flyer to get your project done what would you do if none of the easier methods that i mentioned earlier just aren't working or if you just want to cut out a particular object in an image that's not a person and you need that for your design. You can use the lasso tool. Yes, using the lasso tool does take more time than the other methods that I mentioned earlier, but all of those other methods are based on the principle of selection. And the lasso tool is a perfect tool to use to make your custom selections. Yes, you can use the pen tool, but I personally don't like using the pen tool in Photoshop. So I've always used the lasso tool, but that's just me. So with all that said, I'm gonna show you how I cut out an image and remove the background. So here I already have Photoshop open and I'm just going to locate my image on my computer and then drag it into Photoshop. So my folder is right here and I know I want to use this image and I'm just going to drag it and drop it in. All right, and there we have it. Let's make this a bit bigger. And then I'm just going to start by hitting L on my keyboard for the lasso tool, or you can navigate to your toolbar on the left. It's the third option there. And if you hold down and click, you will see the three options, the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool that I said we'll be using and the magnetic lasso tool. So I already have the polygonal selected. All right, next I'm going to duplicate my layer by right clicking on it and click duplicate and then OK. Or I could have just hit Ctrl and J on my keyboard, as you know. Now let me just go ahead and save my project by hitting Ctrl and S on my keyboard and just saving it by just adding to the end of my file name underscore cut. That's how I usually save every file that I've cut out in all my years of Photoshop. It's just that simple and it will pop up right next to the original image whenever I'm trying to find it. All right. OK. Now how the lasso tool works is you just click and draw your selection that you want to make. If I close that shape, you would see this is the selection right here. And if I wanted to add or minus from this area, like if I made a mistake and this shape was supposed to be smaller, I can hit shift on my keyboard. And it would allow me to add to it and make it bigger. So it will be extended by this new selection that I made. And if I wanted to minus from it, like I said earlier, I would hit Alt on my keyboard and just draw a selection to minus from the current selection that I have. See that? So that's how the polygonal lasso tool works and how you can modify your selection. Let me just hit Ctrl and D to deselect that and it's gone. Okay, so here I have my image, right? And what I want to do is I just want to cut her out of this background and I'm going to do it manually using the lasso tool. All right, so let me just start. How I normally like to cut is I would cut in portions, right? So I'd cut all of right here. Then I would work my way around and cut here and wait more, work my way around, sorry, and cut here until I'm finished. That way I'm not trying to do too much at once. And if I make a mistake, I know where I need to correct. And that just, that's just me. That's how I like to do it. All right, now to start, what you could do is you could just cut her out roughly just by clicking and going around her roughly so you know like where you're going to cut in portions and then you can hit Control, shift and i on your keyboard to select the inverse area of the selection you just made let me undo that if i were to delete the selection that i just made by hitting delete on my keyboard I would have deleted her and that's not what I want. So let me undo that by hitting Ctrl and Z and then redoing the inverse selection by clicking Ctrl, Shift and I, or you could have just right clicked in the area and clicked select inverse. See that? Let me do that one more time. Right click, select inverse. 
and then I can now delete the area that I don't want. All right, and we're deselecting by hitting Control and D, or let me undo that, and we could have deselected by just right clicking and clicked deselect. All right, let's just save this with Control and S with each step we take, all right? Now I'm going to start over here on the right side of the image, as I said earlier. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit L for the lasso tool once again and just click and come and select the area that I want to delete. So what I'm doing, I'm just clicking and going along. See that? And you can hit plus or minus on your keyboard to zoom in. If I wanted to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing or if I just wanted to see my edge is better with each selection that I'm making. I just pointed my mouse over and it just shifted the image over. And I'm just selecting as close as possible to the edge, you know, not cutting off too much of the original shirt color, but at the same time, not keeping too much green from the background behind her. All right. Just a simple process here. It can be time consuming depending on the image that you're working on. But remember, knowing and understanding the foundation principles will make you a better all round graphic designer. So now I'm into the hair, as you can see with hair, hair can be a bit tricky, but what you want to do is zoom in as much as you can on the hair. Well, maybe like this, I don't want to be that zoomed in, but the more you zoom in and work on the hair, when you zoom out, it will look more natural. All right. So it doesn't matter how crooked your edges are <laughs> on your hair, no pun intended, but um, when you zoom out, it will look much, much smoother. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep as much of the hair as possible and not keep any green at all, the green from the background behind her. And I mean, it doesn't matter if you cut off some of this hair, when you're using it in your flyer, nobody will know how much you cut off initially, right? All right. Let me just end this selection and show you what I have so far so you can see what I'm talking about. So, so you just close the selection by just meeting back your first lasso point and then you just hit delete and it will delete the selection that you made. All right. That's what we have so far. Let's compare it with our before and after with our original image here by just turning on the background layer by clicking. That's what we had originally that's what we had after the cut not too bad right let me just come over the right side and just start cutting here i'm just going to click and start here similarly to what we did on her left side image right and we're just selecting how much of the clothing and how much of the background you want to keep you know it's up to you you decide how much you want to keep i mean as i said when you're using a cutout image, nobody will know how much you cut off initially, right? Because it's not like they're seeing the initial image. They're only seeing your finished product, your finished design work. All right. Let me just zoom in some more to get this circle. Let me start the circle right there. And I'm just clicking. Remember, the more you zoom in, it doesn't matter how crooked your lines are. When you zoom out at 100%, it will look more natural, right? Because nobody's going to be zooming in at 300% um, to look at how much you cut your edges perfectly. Nobody's going to do that. All right, let's just come here and stop at the goal of the earring. And we're just going up. And now we're going to continue on the hair. See the hair starts right here. <laughs> hair starts right here. Let's just go ahead and just give it some nice, you know, natural curves because the hair is curly. We don't want too much straight edges, right? Let me just zoom back out and see what we have here. All right, let me just close this selection and then delete and see what we have. All right, delete. Control and D to deselect, Control and S to save. And let's see what we have before and after. That's not too bad, right? All right, let's continue. Let's zoom in on this portion of hair right here, here right here again. And let's just start our selection about here. 
come back up. And the reason why I always start my selection point higher than my cutting point is, remember when I mentioned earlier that if you're working on an image that is not so high resolution, when you're doing this, because you're making so many clicks and the image is not very filled with pixels, which, mean, which means high resolution, it will automatically just close the selection itself. Photoshop tends to do that sometimes. That has happened to me a whole lot in all my years of Photoshop. I don't know if it has ever happened to you, but it has to me in all my time of cutting out images, all right? So let's continue. Let me just start this over. Control and D. Let me just come back and zoom in by pressing plus on my keyboard and then continuing the work on the hair. Just making some natural curves to go with the flow of the hair. As I mentioned earlier, if the hair is curly, I mean, you don't want too much straight edges, right? You can clip off a little piece, like I'm clipping off this piece right here, and that's understandable. But I mean, if your hair is curly, I wouldn't just come right here and then make a sharp cut right here. That's not natural, right? So let me just go. Let's keep this curve. I don't need to get that piece there. I can bypass that because remember when I'm zoomed out at 100% how you'll be viewing the image naturally. Um, nobody can tell how much you've cut off. Do I want to keep this curl? Mm, all right, let's keep this curl. Just slowly walking around this curl. All right. And when I mentioned that Photoshop will automatically close your selection sometimes, if you were to double click by accident like this, it just closed the selection for me. You see that? But because I planned for that, that's not too bad. So let me just go ahead and delete that. Control and D to deselect. And if you look right here, you can see we have some green here and some green here. Let me just go ahead and just select this area and then delete that and come up here and do the same. I think these are going to be the only two curl loops that I keep in this cut. I mean, some hair you just can't do this, right? And you may have to use some of the other methods that we mentioned, but I'll reserve those for future videos, right? All right, so let's just go ahead and just make another selection and just pick up where we left off. All right, let me just go through this real quick. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm not making it perfect. I mean, for the purposes of this tutorial, but you guys get the idea. I'm sure you guys get the idea and I trust you guys. Maybe that was too straight right here, but uh, I'm zoomed in. So when I zoom back out, it will look like it's not even there or I didn't make a mistake. All right. Let's just loop over this curl right here. Remember, you don't have to keep every single strand, right? Let's just come back in because we don't want all this green right here. Let's just bring it back in a bit and then start curling again right here. And we can come all the way down just some random curls just really random curls it's up to you how creative you want to be how realistic you want to be i like to go with the natural flow of the hair keeping as much of the natural elements as possible only cutting off and clipping like if i ha absolutely have no choice like if the hair was just really trashy you know all over the place but um we don't have that problem for this one and in all my years of Photoshop, I rarely have to cut out like people with straight hair. It's always, you know, people of African descent like myself with just curly hair. So you can just like work your way around that. And I mean, if it was someone with um, straight Caucasian hair, then that would be, that would probably be more easier than this that we're doing right here. So once you know how to do the hard stuff and the challenging stuff, then I mean, you'll become a pro in no time. 
do I want to keep this loop right here? All right, let's keep this loop right here, but I think I'm too far around. I always get paranoid when I'm this far around the image from my safety point. Let me just zoom out by hitting minus on my keyboard. I'm definitely too far around because if this were to, if Photoshop were to close this selection on me, then I would have lost all this area right here. So let me just go outside just like that. That's my selected area. Let's just delete control and D and let's see what we have before and after click. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. I mean, do you think she's going to be upset that we cut off so much of her edges and her curls? I don't think so. All right, let's go back in and let's just give this loop some love right here. Let's just delete a little bit of this green that I'm seeing. I mean, you don't have to do this. This is just me just being like extra. Because I mean, if you're using this image on a poster, then if this poster is printed or goes online, you probably won't even see that loop. All right, let's make a safety point right here. Let's call that safety point, you know, clicking all the way around and coming back. That's our safety point. All right, let's continue by just clicking right there where we left off. And then let me zoom in some more by hitting plus on my keyboard. Just to see what's going on right here. Cause I'm seeing some green through the hair. Um, Let's just make sure we eliminate as much of that as possible. All right, let's zoom on by hitting minus to see what's going on. Um, not too bad. We may have to come back in here and just clear out some of that green, but we're doing good so far. Let's just continue. Let's just continue. Remember, it's your discretion. You decide what you keep or what you clip. All right, let's zoom back in so you guys can see. All right, let me just follow this natural loop right here. Let's follow this one as well or... No, I'm not gonna follow that one. I'm just gonna keep following this one and then just meet this one right here. All right. So this is good practice for like your natural precision in Photoshop, you know, how good you are at doing the minuscule tasks. All right. Um, I don't have to keep this because I don't want to. You can decide if you want to or not. All right. And then I can just flow with this loose curl. That's blurred out right here. Oh, maybe that line was too straight. Um, let me just zoom out and see what I have. Mm, it's fine. I'm all the way zoomed in as I said, so it's fine. All right, let me just come back in and then I'm just going to meet this loop right here and then follow through and meet this one. Well, no, I'm going to meet this loop right here, come in, cut off that one here and come here and end right here. All right. So let me just make a imaginary curve. I'm following this one, coming in and ignoring that outside one. And then let me zoom in for you guys. And then I'm following this one. You can see some green in there. And because there's some green in here, I'll just cut off this entire thing and just follow this loop right here. All right. And I think I'll just make an imaginary curl right here and in right at this point here that we started on. Let's zoom out, find where our safety point is and just meet it right there. Delete, Control and D to deselect, Control and S to save. And let's revisit the top here that we said we would revisit. All right, let me just zoom in. See this green right here? I think I want to cut that out. Let me just make a little selection in here. Get rid of some of this green. I mean, it's fine. It could have stayed, but I just wanted to show you guys the power that you have. 
All right, you decide how much definition you want to add to her hair. Let's see what we got. Not too bad, right? Not too bad, right? Control and S. What do you think? Let's see the before and the after. Let's click and turn on our original image. All right, what do you guys think? All right, not too bad, right? Control and S. And what you can do now is you can create like a color behind her and get really creative with it. But let me just save this first as a PNG, as how you would save it if you were to use it on a flyer or poster or something, right? So let me just go Control Shift and S on my keyboard. And here we have the file name underscore cut. And I'm just going to click the drop down from the save as type and select PNG and just click save and that will save it. Normally just select large and that will save it as a transparent background image that I can use on my flyer or poster or whatever I'm designing. All right, let me create a new template, Control and N. And let's um, size this up like a YouTube thumbnail, right? 1920 by 1080 is already there. Let's just hit create. And let's make the background yellow, just G. Or what you could have done, let me just undo that Control and a Z. What you could have done is come down here to your adjustment layers and click and choose solid color. And then it would have automatically chosen the color that I have over here and you can change it if you want but i think i'm going to keep the yellow and then i'm going to locate my file on my computer the one that we just cut out which is right here and just drag it in there we have it let me just size her down a bit then i'm going to align her you could just control and a on your keyboard and that will give you the alignment options up top and let me just align her to the center or you could have aligned her by just clicking on her image over your layers and just clicking your background and selecting both of them by holding control while you clicked and did the same thing, right? But let me just align her horizontal centers, not verticals. All right, and what I can do now, what I can do now is get as creative as I would like. So what I will do is, let me just create a new layer here and just like make a white circle Let's select my shape tool by hitting U and then hitting shift and U till I get my circle or ellipse tool and just drag a circle by clicking and holding shift. And then I'm going to change, oops, let me extend my properties. And then I'm going to choose the fill of that circle to be white. And then I'm just going to align that with my background by selecting both of them by clicking with the control key pressed and just align the horizontal and vertical centers. Um, maybe bring over the circle a little bit more to be perfectly centered behind her and then what I can do now is go to filter and blur Gaussian blur convert to smart object yes and then just like Gaussian blur this out so it gives a nice soft gradient behind her you don't have to do all of this this is just me showing you the power that you have with a transparent PNG background image, what you can do and how creative you can get with it. Let me make her a bit bigger and just expand her like that and just bring her over. Maybe she's a bit angled too much to one side. Let me just rotate her a bit and then just hit the down arrow on my keyboard till I hide this cut line right there. All right, that's good. And then let me just draw like a rectangle behind her by hitting U on my keyboard, then navigating back to the rectangle tool by pressing shift and U, and then dragging, and just dragging a rectangle behind her. And let's just double click on the rectangle and make it black. Or maybe let's pick the color from her shirt, the dark gray color from her shirt, and just move this rectangle down in my layers because I don't want it to be above her face. What I'll do next is I will adjust the opacity of this rectangle by hitting five on the number pad on my keyboard. And that will automatically set the opacity to 50%. But I kind of like it better when it was at 100%. So let's just go back there by pressing zero. And I think maybe let's drag this a bit lower. Mm. What do you guys think? I think I will leave it like this, but what do you guys think of the cutout? I mean, we started we started here, we started right here and ended here. 
What do you guys think? Let me know how I did, please and thank you. And now that you guys have seen how to cut out an image using the polygon and lasso tool, are you now more confident to start cutting out your own images and leveling up in your flyer designs, in your poster designs? Let me know in the comments below. If you end up cutting out an image for yourself, be sure to email it to me. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. My email address is also listed below. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is C-Jam and I will see you guys in the next video.